Welcome to Deloitte M&A Views, a Deloitte podcast series exploring the latest trends and topics in mergers and acquisitions. I'm Greg Jarrett. And today we discuss what's been happening with M&A transactions in the investment management sector and how firms are strategically positioning themselves for competitive advantage. We're joined today by two leaders from Deloitte's investment management M&A team. Masaki Noda, Managing Director with Deloitte and Touche LLP, and Jeff Stakel of the KC Cork Practice of Deloitte Consulting LLP. Gentlemen, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. And Masaki, let, let's start with you. What's the current landscape for M&A activity in the investment management sector? Thank you, Greg. Global investment management M&A deals and deal sizes are rising. Um, the industry is in its mature stage of its life cycle where our firms are experiencing low organic growth, and increased competition. What we're seeing is that these firms are having challenging revenue growth and increasing cost spaces driven by technology updates and compliance needs. This is in turn applied pressure on their operating margins. Furthermore, these firms are operating in a difficult environment. Over the past few years, passive investment vehicles have been registering record inflows. And although the market volatility during the first quarter of 2018 has slowed things down. Overall, passive net flows have still been stronger than their active counterparts. In such scenarios, the few firms that are growing successfully have managed to offer low-key products or provide various product lineups. For growth in 2018, investment management firms should consider bolstering their inorganic growth strategies, including, of course, their M&A strategies to prepare for potential more challenging times ahead. And organic growth could prove to be a key strategy for investment managers as it provides scale, which unlocks other benefits relatively quickly. Jeff, based on what Masaki is saying, growth should be a key focus area for investment managers over this coming year. Can you talk a little more about what is driving this need for growth? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Greg. I would agree and echo everything that Masaki said. And I would say that we do see growth as a big driver of, of activity in the market. And I think a lot of it is tied to managers' aspiration or need to build scale in their business. And you see that for a few reasons. When you look at the overall industry, it is one that we see as concentrating over time. So the amount of supply in the industry is relatively large, and the demand overall is becoming increasingly smaller year over year. And so there's this concentration element that's happening. Leading firms have continued to separate from the pack. What I mean by that is flows, more and more net new flow is accruing to the largest providers in the market. And the industry in and of itself is just becoming more global. And so I think that a lot of managers see kind of a big scale benefit that's linked to getting bigger overall. And they see this because it provides kind of a broader access of professionals and a broader distribution reach to start to penetrate markets globally in different channels that perhaps historically the firm did not play in. In a way, it provides a more, certainly a more diverse talent pool, which I think going forward will become increasingly important. It widens the product set for a lot of managers, and it clearly leads to, or it can lead to some key cost efficiencies. I think the other big aspect is, interestingly, when you think about overall scale, you think about absolute capital to invest in certain initiatives. And with a focus on technology, on branding, promotion, marketing, the absolute level of spend in those categories is really important. And so being big allows you to start to invest in those areas to make it a, a differentiated value proposition within the organization. Well, thank you, Jeff. Now, Masaki, how does M&A support the investment managers in their need for growth? And are we talking about specific types of growth? Sure, Greg. In addition to the cost efficiencies that Scales provides that, that Jeff mentioned, uh, M&A provides the ability to acquire new skill sets and, and capabilities quickly. We've seen a surge in deals over the past 18 months or so uh, relating to managers diversifying uh, or strengthening their product lineup. This is where we've seen deals and acquisitions in specific areas, such as ETF and various alternative products, such as credit and real estate, and even some in energy and infrastructure. In addition to this, we've been seeing increasing 
cross-border transactions. Jeff noted the growth in global transactions, where we've seen transactions to and from Canada, Australia, and various parts of Europe and Asia. We've also seen investment management firms making acquisitions in the fintech area and expanding capabilities in technology as well. And many investment managers have already realized the importance of inorganic growth. With over 200 deals during 2017, this has been 50% over the transaction numbers that we've seen in 2012, which was only five, five and a half years ago. In addition to that, average transaction size has also increased, where in 2017, we've been witnessing a number of big ticket transactions. As you can see, the strategic importance in making deals is uh, pretty clear. Jeff, as we wrap up our discussion here, can you highlight what investment managers should take away as they consider M&A as a growth strategy? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's a few things that investment managers should take away as they consider M&A as part of their growth strategy. I would say overall, uh, while we did see activity in 2017 and a lot of activity, it probably wasn't in line with what a lot of people in and around the market anticipated. There was certainly a lot of headlines around consolidation happening at a faster pace than what we saw. And I think a lot of that may have been related to just strong growth equity markets. And so as we see those markets moderate, we've seen volatility start to reemerge a little bit already in 2018, we may see activity pick up overall. And I think as managers are thinking about onboarding or thinking about new M&A activities, they'll really do it for two reasons. And the first is all about the ability to reinvest in their business and find areas that are true growth engines going forward. And so M&A allows you to either grow at a faster rate than you otherwise would have, which can translate to more capital to reinvest, or you can take some cost out of the system to free up capital and invest in growth areas as well. The second is it goes back to the idea of scale and starting to derive competitive advantages in parts of the organization, and quite honestly, parts of the industry where managers just haven't had to do it historically that we think will be important going forward. The whole idea of differentiating on the client engagement model, differentiating through technology, differentiating through analytics. To be able to be successful on those fronts takes real capital and it takes real investment. And I do believe that there's a lot of managers out there that think, M&A is a viable path to be able to set those priorities in motion. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for listening to Deloitte M&A Views, sponsored by Deloitte's M&A Institute. This podcast is provided by Deloitte and is intended to provide general information only. This podcast is not intended to constitute advice or services of any kind. For additional information about Deloitte, go to Deloitte.com slash about. We also release new podcasts regularly, and if you subscribe, you won't miss a single one. To stay connected and receive more information on Deloitte's M&A service offerings, visit Deloitte.com slash US slash MA subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Deloitte M&A. Until next time.